It's been a while since I've done any videos, so I thought I would share a project that I'm working on called the Texas Special. And the first part of the Texas Special is this gun. And it is a Cimarron, made by Uberti, replica of the Colt 1851 Navy cartridge conversion, the Richards Mason conversion that Colt did in their factory using leftover percussion parts uh, about 1871. So that's where we start with. Um, before we get on to the why and the how and then the results of all this, let's check the gun, make sure that it is safe. There we go. Okay, so the first part of this is the why. Well, it's easy to say why not. I've had this gun about five years, and it's probably got about a thousand rounds through it. And it's a, it's a really nice gun. Navies are well balanced. They're accurate. Yeah, they, they tend to um, shoot high, but that's what they all do. You adjust either just by adjusting or maybe changing out the front sight. Um, but I like this gun a lot. Uh, but I wanted to do some modifications to it, and here's the thinking beyond just why not. When you watch the old classic Hollywood westerns, say the Red River or even Rawhide on television, you've got you know Texas cowboys, drovers going up from Texas to places like Missouri or places in Kansas. And um, they're all carrying the single action army model 1873, the Colt Peacemaker. And that's a great gun, but what happens if you're on the trail and it's not 1873 yet? You're probably carrying a percussion gun, the cap and ball guns, the 51 Navy and 36 caliber, or the Colt Army and 44 caliber. So I say that to get to this. Let's say you're a Texas cowboy, Texas drover, you've got a few extra dollars, you want to convert your, your trusty 36 caliber Navy to those nifty new cartridges so you can get it converted from 36 caliber to a 38 Colt, what we now call 38 short Colt. And you get the barrel shortened a couple inches to make it a little easier to deal with. And then finally, um, you get some custom grips put on there because it's Texas and you've got to have a longhorn, right? So there's the why. This is the ultimate 1870 trail gun to me. In my mind, this is, this is it. So how? So that's part two is the how. So we're going to start with the easy part of the how the barrel swap. And this navies are basically modular. If you're not familiar with them, the whole barrel assembly comes off uh, for cleaning. And that's done ba basically by turning this screw, pressing the barrel wedge out, pull the whole thing off. You'll see a couple of holes there at the bottom. That's because in the part of the frame there's two prongs, so it's keyed. So I ordered this from Cimarron. It's five and a half inch barrel, about $107. It came with the sight already installed. When I got it, I basically removed, not basically, I did. I removed the brass extractor from here, put it on to here, put it back on, done. No special work, none of that stuff. Um, as far as accuracy, we can discuss that at the last part when we get to results, but that's it. That's the simple part. If you've got the full frame in it, like a, like a Peacemaker, single action army here then I understand those barrels are screwed in that's a whole nother thing um, forget that let's go on to the grips um, now these grips came from an outfit called grip maker here's the package I bought them from an outfit called Dixie Gunworks which specializes in black powder guns about $53 they have very good instructions. Now, I don't want to cover what's already in these instructions because they're very thorough. If you decide to do this, and you can do it, it just takes time and patience. You read these twice before you take any parts out of the bag and then you follow them very closely and they are very well written uh, instructions. Just some notes. Um, first of all, the grips themselves 
They come as three pieces, the two ends and the spacer. Now these are the original grips that I'm waving around here in front of the camera. They're for, they were very nice wood grips. I think they're walnut. But you can see how three pieces become one. And when you're ready to install these, they basically are shaped like this here. Now when you do install these uh, new grips, once you've done everything, and we'll cover some more of that in a minute, but I just want to get to a, a point here. If you install these, you do have to remove the back strap, and there are three screws, two up the top and one here, but you will not be messing with any interior uh, components. There is a hammer spring which comes along the front. It goes down this part here and attaches on the inside with a separate screw. Uh, you won't be messing with any of that, so it's just these two screws, that screw, off they come. Um, Screws on this gun, this Uberti Navy, are, the metal is kind of soft. Make sure you have a good fitting screwdriver. Outfits like Midway will sell Peacemaker screwdriver sets, and there's one or two of those out of the three screwdriver set that work real well with these. So if you don't have a good screwdriver set and you're going to mess with these at all, you're going to want to get one. And like I said, I think the set that I've got, I wish I had it here, but I think it came from Midway and it. Um, it was specifically for peacemakers, uh, single action armies, but um, one or two out of the three three screwdriver set works real well with these and it'll keep you from chewing these up because they are soft. That tool that comes in the box, yeah, I would only, it's a flat three headed screwdriver deal. I would only use that for emergencies because it'd be very easy to slip and, with these. But you can do this. I mean, this is, this is not that difficult. It's time and patience. Um, Let's see, where was I going to go next with this? Ah, colors. The instructions, they talk about dyes and, and they recommend leather dye. And so starting with light tan, which I think is recommended in the instructions, this color thing here doesn't tell you much and the dye in the bottle helps, doesn't help you at all. They all kind of look like this till they're dry. So what I did was I took a little bit of this, and before I did anything, I took one of the you know, inside part, if you can see it here, I just put a little on there and let it dry. And this dries very bright, very almost neon. So what I did was, and I wish I had the other bottle, but I also had some fibings dark brown. So what I mixed was is six parts of light tan, one part of dark brown. And then I cut that in half with dye reducer. It's basically a thinner for this dye. Now to be honest, what I, what I did was very was not very scientific. I took a, a plastic um, container and I put six caps of this, six, uh, one, six caps of this, one cap of light brown, and then I believe six caps of this mixed it around. So dark brown one, this six, this six. Mixed it around, put on one coat, with a 38 caliber cloth cleaning patch that I have. I have some round ones, doesn't really matter, but I used a cloth cleaning patch, about that big. Rubbed it on, let it dry overnight. The second coat, they say you need to thin this with. So, um, brown. I didn't add any more actual dye. What I did was is I just thinned it out with three or four cap lo uh, of thinner in that container. And I had put a lid on the container so it would, uh, would not start to evaporate. And so it, uh, with the second coat, after the 24-hour dry from the first coat, you have a thinned out, even more thinned out coat that you put on there. And I put it on with the cloth cleaning patch and let it dry. Finally, there's three products they recommend in the instructions to put a finish on these because these are very porous, these, these gun grips. As you're sanding them, because they're made oversized, so you're going to have to do some light sanding, some wet sanding to get them down to the size. Um, time and patience, you can do it. The final step you want to do before you install these on the gun and they're looking one piece like this is you're going to want to seal them because they are porous. The product I used is called True Oil. Here it is. It's made to finish uh, wood gun stocks. And again I applied this with a 38 caliber uh, cloth patch. They're just cloth patches about that big. Not too fuzzy and put on a coat let it dry put on a second coat now the advantage to this uh, besides sealing it and they mention this in the instructions is, is even though this is smooth it is not sticky or anything like that 
it has a certain adhesion or grip to it because of just the way it is. So when you're at the range, it's not slippery. It actually has a certain grip to it. You can, if you rub your fingers over it, um, you'll feel it. So it has that added benefit. And again, this was put on before the grips were installed. Now, a couple of other notes about this grip uh, is they were wide. You can see here how much wider they were. That's the first note. Um, I actually like this being a little wider. The other ones were flush, and I'll tell you why. When I'm at the range, and I cock the gun, drop the thumb, cock the gun, drop the thumb, I'm usually kind of wandering around because usually these grips are smooth, but not these. There's a little little bit of a ledge, and these were uh, sanded, so they're kind of rounded, and you can see where the die kind of darkened it a little bit, where that bump is. Okay. So I kind of like that. You may not. You may want to sand the inside a little more to make them flush. Uh, that's up to you. So that's the first note. Uh, the second note is you'll see these circles here. Now these did not show up when I got these grips. They, these were white, white grips. I presume it's probably part of the molding process or something. And because they are porous when in anything... You know, see it's a certain areas like where it was sanded or these areas for some reason they darken. So this might be a deal breaker for you, these circles. It, it doesn't bother me because again, it's a trail gun. I intend to literally wear this thing out before I am done. Um, but if it's a deal breaker for you, there are other makes that offer longhorn grips out there and various other designs, eagles, Mexican eagles, and all that stuff. The reason I picked this one was because I like this particular longhorn. There are others, so again, if it's a deal breaker, there's other ones out there. And just kind of a quick tour. Uh, this side, I'll admit, because it's the glamour side, it's the side that will show if it's in a holster. I spent a little more time, I should have paid a little more attention on this side because there's a little bit of frame sticking out here. But still, yeah, trail gun, right? So it's not going to be such a big deal. So that's the only thing I can think of with these, uh, with these grips. Uh, again, the instructions are very thorough. Just follow them. Uh, try it, you know. Um, you learn a lot. I did learn a lot. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned it earlier. But the instructions talk about taking the three pieces and gluing them together with epoxy. What I used was JB Weld. It's a two-part epoxy. It's very easy to use. You follow the instructions. Take a piece of cardboard. Run two lines down side by side, the same, same width and length. Mix it together. Put them on. It takes several hours to set and, and probably, I don't know, what did it say, 14 hours or something to cure. So... In the process, you're going to want to let them set for 24 hours. Um, so there's that. So we've covered the first two parts. The third part are the results, the business end. Did taking two inches off the barrel change the accuracy? Um, maybe, but I don't think so. Now let me show you the results. But before I put the results out here, drum roll please. Since I did the 38 long and short colt videos I've started wearing lined bifocals so I don't do much shooting at playing cards anymore I'm kind of on a Jess Harper uh, school of shooting don't aim point it's just easier with the bifocals uh, your results may vary but here we go so shot at four distances 15 excuse me 10 15 20 and 30 feet there's not too much reflection on this I think believe these are 8-inch circles. And I use 38 short and 38 long cold ammo. Sorry, I didn't note which one was which. But these, this is 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet. If you are shooting at playing cards, out around the 15 feet foot range, here's a box of playing cards. I think you can nail at least 3 out of 5. And if I had tried, maybe I would have gotten there. Bottom line, I don't think you lose much uh, accuracy from a long, slightly longer barrel. The two inches, I don't think, is, uh, is a, for me, is not a deal breaker. All the shots I fired are on this circle. So if you can nail a, a paper plate at 30 feet, I think you're doing well. You pull it in some, practice a lot. Um, 
But again, if you're, you know, rocking the bifocals, shooting one hand in 30 feet, pointing, you can get these kind of results. Put some effort, some practice into it. I, I don't think you'll find any real practical difference uh, by lopping, lobbing two, lopping two inches off of the barrel. It's all good. Again, I wish it were a little more scientific, but you know, such is life. So there you have it. Part one of the Texas Special, the trail gun. Uh, part two, I hope to have in the next few weeks, I'm going to do some semi-period gun leather, some transition gun leather, and hope to see you then.